Hello and welcome to my YouTube tutorial on how to crochet this granny square balaclava. My name is Shirley and I am an illustrator and crocheter and uh, welcome to my channel if you're new. Let's go ahead and get started. For today's tutorial we are going to use a four and a half millimeter hook and we're also using acrylic yarn in the medium weight or size four and for these squares you're going to need about a total of 64 grams of um, crochet of yarn um, and then for the pink part that is going to be about 70 grams of um, whatever color you want to use on this ribbing area um, and that should be it and let's go ahead and get started. So to start our tutorial we're going to need four of these granny squares and these measure six inches by six inches um, and in centimeters that is about 15 centimeters um, and if you know how to make a granny square go ahead and get started and make the four of the granny squares um, and you can just skip to the part where we're starting to attach them but if you don't know how to make a granny square i'm going to walk you through that but what you need to know is the double crochet stitch and then you also need to know how to chain how to slip stitch um but yeah we're going to go ahead and get started on the four granny squares we need okay so we are going to gather our first color and mine is going to be yellow and we're going to make the first row and so sometimes i have a little bit of trouble like not knowing what it's going to look like because like in this form, it looks like this, but like when you're first starting out, it actually looks like this. Um, you have like all these little corners here. It looks like a little mini square. So I feel like it's kind of helpful to see what we're, our first row is gonna accomplish before we like kind of get started and like into it. Otherwise, like you don't know exactly what you're trying to accomplish here. Um, but yeah, so here's our little guy and I'm now realizing that I made a yellow one on top of the yellow desk. So hopefully he's not too difficult to see. Um, whoops, I'll just put him here, okay? <laughs> okay, so we are going to start by slip, making a slip knot. Slip knot. The voice cracked really good there. And then we're gonna add it onto the hook. Then we're gonna chain four. So that's one, that's two, three, four. And then we're going to take our hook and put it into this first stitch we created. Yarn over and pull the loop through. And then we have this little circle. So now we're going to chain two. And insert two double crochets into the hole, the center hole. And so now we have reached the point of like, here's our chain two, here's um, our first two double crochets. So now we're gonna chain three and make this little corner. We're gonna chain three, one, two, three. And then now we're gonna insert three double crochets into the center hole. So now we have about half of this done, right? So now we're going to, uh, so we just finished um, a three double crochet. So now we're going to make another corner by chaining three, just as we did before. And now in our center hole, we're going to put in two double crochets. One. Two, did I say two? I meant to say three. We're gonna do three. <laughs> and then chain three, two, three. And then we're gonna do our final three double crochets in this, um, this row. So one, two, and three. And then we are approaching our last corner, so we're going to do another three chains. And then here we are back to where we started. Um, so as you can see, in our first, um, our first like section, not really a section, it's like this first um, group of three double crochets, 
we use the chain two to act as our first double crochet and then we did two more but in the rest of them we did three double crochets here we did three and here we did three and in every corner that we see we saw we did three stitches or three three chains um so that is pretty much how you make this first square um and to end it we're just gonna slip into the top of this loop here um pull up a chain pull and yep there you go i'm gonna clip and here is my little square. Now we have our yellow square done. Next, we're going to make the next row surrounding it. So this would be the pink color in this. Um, and so I am going to do that in this white cream color. So I'm going to tie on my um, yarn. And I'm just going to use this yarn to almost secure my other loose end here. So when I tie over this yarn, it's like I'm like forcing it into the project, if that makes sense. But you will have to tuck in your ends. I mean, you don't have to, but like it's going to look very nice when you tuck in your ends. But I think this just gives a little bit more security. So I'm just tying it on like a regular knot um, into one of these corner holes going in through my hole and pulling up a loop and I'm going to chain two. Remember this chain two acts as one of our double crochets. I'm going to double crochet, double crochet, and now we've reached a corner so we're going to chain three and double crochet three times into this next area here. So now we've reached this three double crochet on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is now we're gonna chain one. This acts as like a hole. Basically we're creating another hole so that in the future, our next row is gonna go into that hole we created. So if you can kind of tell here. But yeah, so now we're going to insert three double crochets. Um, so, so we chained one and now we're going to insert three double crochets into the next corner here. I've reached another corner, so I'm going to chain three. And then on the other side here, we have this gap, so three double crochets. That's what it's looking like so far. Um, and now we're going to chain one because we reached this area. Um, and now we we've reached another hole space here. So we're going to put three double crochets into it. And we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And now you can kind of see the pattern forming here. We're making a square that's just slightly bigger than the square we just had. Um, but yeah, so another three double crochets. Chain one, another three double crochets into here. Chain three because we just reached a corner and we're turning our work and then putting in three double crochets. Chaining one. And then we're slipping back into our very first two chains to create our square. Again, we're going to take our scissors and cut. And there you go. So next we are going to do um, this next row 
and this square is yellow. I'm going to now do this third row um, and I'm going to attach the color like we did before and just tie it on. And then we're going to pull up a loop, chain two. Now we're going to do, oopsie, lost my hook, two double crochets. Because remember that first chain two acts as a double crochet. Um, and then we're going to chain one. And then we're going to do three double crochets into this corner. Chain three because we reached a corner. Um, so if this makes sense, like when we reach a corner, we're building another corner on top of it. Um, so that's why we're doing these three double crochets and then chain three and then going back into this same hole because we needed to turn this way. So now we're putting three double crochets into the corner hole, chaining one. And now, so we, we have this hole here that we've never really seen before because we're not turning in it. We're not putting, um, we're not putting, I guess, six double crochets like we do in a corner. We're just wanting it to go straight across. Um, and continue the square motion. So all we need to do, oops, is put three double crochets. Okay, if I can crochet right now, three double crochets into the hole. Then we're gonna chain one, and now we've reached a corner again, so we know what to do with a corner. We're gonna do three double crochets. Sorry, I have crochet anxiety, can't crochet on camera. Um, and then we're gonna chain three and another three double crochets. Chaining one. Um, and now we've reached this like same middle area again. So we want it to go straight across. We're not trying to turn or anything. We're just putting three double crochets. Chain one again. So um, go ahead and continue and I'll meet you back around where we're gonna end. So here I am at the end, I'm doing my third double crochet into this last part of the corner. So I'm chaining one again, and here I am slipping back into this corner and pulling through. So basically, we're gonna do keep doing this kind of pattern around the granny square, and we need um, six rows in total, one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever it takes to get your hat, or your uh, your squares to measure about six inches by six inches or 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. Um, because, you know, maybe you're crocheting with a little bit, it's like a thicker yarn. And so like maybe six rows for you is, or six rows for me, maybe five rows for you. So it's important to measure. Otherwise it's not gonna like fit around your head, if that makes sense. Um, so I am just going to continue um, with my other three rows and I'm gonna move pretty fast for, through the rest of it. Um, so if you're not understanding it by now, definitely go take a look at a tutorial I link below. Um, it's going to be a lot more easier for you to understand, a lot more concise. Um, and just because it's like an hour long tutorial on how to make a granny square. And, um, and this was like a 10 minute tutorial. So um, we're going to continue and fin um, make three more rows. And once you finish those three rows, um, come back and meet me for assembly. 
So now I've got my four squares together and I am going to lay them out in this kind of formation. So I have this one, my, I'm going to call this dark blue and I'm just referring to the very outside color. So this is my dark blue and I'm putting it at the top here. Um, and I have this very professional post-it note, you know, uh, with all my, um, colors and stuff. So, and then this green one, um, is going to be the back. So that's going to be covering the back of my head. This left on the left here is going to cover my left side of my head. And this one is pink and it's going to cover the right side. So this is what my little chart looks like. If you want to keep your own chart, um, feel free to just, you know, kind of draw your own. Um, but yeah, so this is what it looks like. And so what I need to do next is form these two, um, these four squares together so that these go together, these go together, and then these are all connected here. So in the end, it's going to form something like this, almost like a cube, but you're missing two sides. Um, and so hopefully that makes sense. So when these come together like this, they're going to form the front of your head area. Um, so yeah, so now we're going to attach our granny squares. I'm just going to start by attaching it in this pattern just because it's easier to do so. Um, and so I, you can use any method, but I'm going to join together with a slip stitch um, and that's going to force, when I seam it together, this pink is going to show on the outside. So here you can see a different balaclava I uh, was working on and you can see how this white part is the part that shows up. Um, and I just kind of like the look of how it shows on the outside. Um, so that's what I'm going to go for, but you know, feel free to do whatever method of joining granny squares, you know, um, if that makes it easier for you, but yes, I will show you this method right now. So I'm first going to attach these two pieces right here. And then I'm going to just, you know, start from here and then go this way and then attach this way and then attach finally this way. Um, I think it's just easier to just attach it all at once together. Once you get the shape together, you'll understand it a little bit more. Um, and so I'm going to start with these two. Um, so my pink, which is my right side and my green, which is my back side, And I'm just going to line them up together here. Um, and grab my pink yarn. Um, the pink is going to be like the, the rest of the hat pretty much. So I need to find the corner of this spot here. So this is my corner. I know that we put three, um, chains into, to make a corner. So I know that my second one is like the very tip of the corner, if that makes sense. Um, and then, so I'm finding it here as well. And so I slip stitch and add it onto my hook. And I'm going to take this top one and poke it just through the loop that we have here, the second one. And poke it through this the same loop here. And pull through. Oopsie. And so now we're just going to work the, um, we're going to pick up the front loop from our top, top granny square. And then we're going to pick up the bottom loop or the back loop from this other granny square, the one on the bottom. So this um, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, the granny squares have like these V's that go around the edge, right? So the top one, the one furthest from you is called the back loop. And the one closest to you is the front loop. Same in this situation, we're working in the back loop on the bottom. We want this loop and not this loop. So poking up through the front loop the back loop and then pull through all the way. That's a little bit difficult at the beginning. Front loop, back loop, slip stitch. 
And I also included a video in the description that just, um, just kind of describes this um, joining method a little bit better than I can. Um, but yes, this is the joining method that I prefer because it just gives you like a little bit of a contrast color there. And I think by using this color, it's going to help tie it in towards the end. So I'm just doing this front loop on top, back loop on bottom, pull through. And now I can see that I have this beautiful um, kind of chain looking connection. And I think it's really cute. And so I'm going to continue this all the way to the end of um, this row, um, to the square. And so I will just meet you guys um, at the end there. And feel free to pause this video and we'll get right back to it. So I've pretty much finished attaching this one. I'm just gonna finish this up and then I'm gonna attach the green to the blue or for you, it's gonna be the, the back piece to the top piece. So. And so I know I'm finished when I hit the corner piece of this pink one or my right piece and the corner of the green here. So corner to corner. And so the pink, I'm just not gonna touch anymore. I'm gonna come in and with my blue, I'm gonna find that corner, which is right here. And then I'm just gonna continue what I was doing before. So um, the front loop here, back loop here, and slip stitch. It is very difficult at the beginning to get them. Front loop, back loop. Okay, that was much better. Um, and then you're just gonna continue there and I'll just meet you back again at this corner. Okay, so now that we're gonna add our last piece so that we have our full, um, I don't even know what to call this kind of shape, like a T, it reminds me of that Tetris piece that like sits at an angle. Um, anyways, uh, you're gonna find that corner again and, and then you're gonna find the other side and then you're gonna pull through all of them. Again, I always have trouble with these, so I'm like very pulling real tight. Um, and so again, we go front loop on this side, back loop on this side. Pull through. We're just going to continue doing that for the rest of um, the, the polyclava, the top. Um, and then when you get to the end, we're going to trim the ends. Um, but I will show you how to do that once I get there. So feel free to pause and finish up this last seam. So now that we have reached the end of our um, of our attachment here, we finally got the left um, all of the panels attached to one big T. Um, I'm just going to clip this end here and pull through, and then now we're going to finally attach this to this and this to this. So it's going to look again like this kind of four sided like a cube but it's like missing a couple pieces and I'm just gonna do my best to find a spot where I can tie on so I'm just going to tie on here in this corner. I'm gonna pull up a loop and then I'm going to go back loop, front loop, back loop, sorry, front loop, back loop. So seam together these two ends um, and then we will, and then we will meet back up. Okay, so we got everything together now. We got our, our, um, you know, we got our, this was our top piece. We have our back piece here, which is in the green. And then we have our right piece, which was the pink for me and the light blue on the left side. Um, and so the next step we're going to do 
We're going to clean this up later, um, but what we're going to do is start ribbing around the side, like towards our neck. So the first thing we're going to do is come from this side, the right side, to the left side, using a long chain to connect these parts. And then we're going to start making the ribbing going this way and then around our head. Um, and if that's confusing, don't worry, I'm going to show you a little bit more, but I just wanted to show you visually what's going on in these next steps and like what exactly is going to happen. So chaining across our chin and then creating a ribbing that goes all the way around um, our head. Okay, so like I just said, we're gonna start from this corner here and chain, so this is my right side here, and chain to the left side, creating um, almost like a neck strap or like a chin strap. Um, and that is going to be the width of our balaclava. So if we really want like a super tight one, um, I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone's face is that super tight. Um, my recommendation is to do about a chain of 25. So that is what we're going to do, but you can go a little bit tighter if you want it like more tight to your face, I guess. Um, but let's just start with the 25 and then you can try it on and see how it feels. Um, so I'm just going to slip stitch into the corner of my pink and tie it on. And then I'm going to chain, uh, so I'm going to pull up a loop and I'm going to chain 25. And this is kind of weird. So I'll just kind of show you what happens. Okay, so I've chained 25 and now I'm going to slip it into the opposite corner. This is my left side now and just like that. And so I'm gonna show you what it kind of looks like on me just cause like, you know, kind of looks weird. Don't, kind of don't really know what's going on. So let me just show you. So here we got our balaclava hood on and here is my little chain that I just created. So what I did was now I'm closing off this area so that I can just completely wrap around my neck with my um, ribbing. And you can see kind of in this example piece, in my example piece, I ran out of yarn and didn't finish it. But um, so you can see where I created this chain across the face. And then this is where I started making the ribbing go all the way around the, um, the neck area. So if this is comfortable for you, um, it shouldn't dig in too tightly. It should just kind of loosely rest against your neck because um, in the end, we may add like a little bit of thickness or you could, you don't have to. If this is choking you right now, like it's not going to be a, a good hat for you. It's not gonna be a good fit. If you want it to be a little bit looser, you're gonna have to take this out and chain a little bit longer. Um, and if you want it to be like super like tighter, then you know, just take out how many chains, whatever fits for you, whatever works best for you, um, and just do that. Okay, cool. So we're gonna continue with the ribbing, woo! <laughs> All right, so the ribbing, the most difficult part. Well, I don't. I wouldn't say it's super difficult. Um, you just need to know how to single crochet. Um, it's just really, really time consuming. So I'm going to chain 20. So like I'm in this chain, but I'm gonna chain 20, one, two. Um, and so this length is the length like how low my balaclava is going. So this is how much it's gonna cover your neck, basically. Like um, if that's how long you want it, perfect. 20 is perfect. If you want longer, again, chain longer. If you want shorter, chain shorter. It's really up to you. I think 20 is about a good, um, good length. Uh, but yeah, so. Once you've chained your 18, you're going to turn your work and now you're going to work into these loops you just created. So we're going to create single crochets um, all the way back and then into this ribbing. So single crochet um, in the first, first stitch from your hook here. So one. And then you should end up with 19 single crochets now. So you chain 20, but you end up with 19. 
you wanted to chain longer, like you chain 25, you would end up with 24. You chain shorter, you would chain like, um, I don't know, if you chain 16, you would end up with 15 single crochets. So hopefully that makes sense. It's always just one less. So I'm going to single crochet all the way here. Oh, okay, so now that we've reached our 19 stitches, we're going to slip back into the second, so not the one that we're attached here. We're gonna slip one into this next one here. The second one, like the one right next to wherever our pink is. So we're gonna slip right into this and pull through like this. And then we're gonna slip into the next one our next stitch here. Slip in here and boom, there you go. And now we're going to completely turn our work and we're going to single crochet again, 19 single crochets. We're always going to do 19 from now or whatever your chain was minus. Um, so, and we're only going to work now in the back loops only. So when we work in the back loops only, we're going to create this kind of ribbing effect and it's going to look very cute. So yeah, so now I slipped into that and I'm going to just work here into that first stitch I see. Working 19 single crochets. So now that I've reached the end here, I'm going to chain one and turn my work so that I'm back facing this way. And I'm just going to re repeat these two steps until I reach all the way around my hat, which is so many steps. It's a lot of single crocheting. It's a lot of ribbing, but trust me, you're going to get a very beautiful ribbing at the end. So I'm going to show you guys one more row and then you are just free to go at it. Um, pause this video, you know, don't forget to drink some water, just kind of go for it and do your ribbing. And um, while you're working, just make sure every row, um, few rows, you're just continuing counting. Um, because I mean, if you're like crocheting 20, it's not a big deal that you're not crocheting 19, you know, um, but it does look a little bit wonky. So if you really want like that perfect, consistent ribbing all the way around, you want it to make it look like really quality, um, then I would definitely just go all the way around. Um, yeah. Um, I would just, you know, make sure that you're crocheting the same number. So here we are again. Um, after crocheting 19 single stitches, we're going to slip into this and then um, and then slip into the next stitch, turn our work and repeat. So as, um, as you guys can see, the ribbing is starting to form. You can see this kind of like bump here. So that's just gonna be keep happening all over um, your crochet work. It's eventually gonna look more like this. Um, and so I am gonna meet you guys um, all the way back to this area here. Um, and then I'm going to help you work through these chains because they're very similar, um, but just a little bit more difficult just because the chain is so delicate and you're working through the chain instead of working through like these thick loops here. Yeah, pause the video and I will be crocheting um, and I will talk to you guys in a second. So here I am and I'm working into the last corner area of the thing. So I'm pulling a slip stitch into this. And then I'm going to just slip right into the center of the chain. Sorry, it's kind of difficult to see. So before you were like going through these two V's of the granny square, you're just going to pop right into the center, pop right into the center of these chains. Um, but yeah, so that's what it's going to look like. Um, and then you're just going to do that the rest of the way. And so I am going to keep crocheting. And then when you get to this area here at the end, um, you can unpause this video and I will show you how to do that part. So we finally reached the end of our little ch our chin strap area. And now we have 
this much left and we need to connect our two um, ends, I guess, our two, uh, just make the, we're trying to connect it that we, so that we can, you know, finish off the ribbing. So I'm finishing off this area here and pulling through my last single crochet. And I just trimmed my um, yarn so that I can finish off with a mattress stitch. Um, you can do whatever you want to attach these two. You can even use the slip stitch method that we used for the hat or for the main, like the granny square area. You can do whatever you want, but I am just going to do a mattress stitch. So I thread my little tapestry needle and then actually this wouldn't be a mattress stitch. I'm not sure what this is. I'm just going back and forth pretty much and bringing it together. I'm just going through um, the loops that we created. And then I'm just going back and forth and pulling tight to close. And then you should do that and then finish up and tie off. So now I'm approaching the end of this area. And I'm just closing this up here. And then I'm just gonna come in here and, you know, kind of tie off where I can. And then we're going to try on our balaclava. And we're almost done. We're just about to put the finishing details on and then we're all good to go. So here we are with our balaclava so far. I think it looks really cute. Um, I think I'm just going to add um, a little bit of detailing around the edges. Okay, so to finish the balaclava, all we need to do is slip stitch around this entire edge all the way back here and then end up back here and then we're just gonna tie it off and it's pretty simple. So we're gonna take our working yarn and tie it into any of the corners here. So I'm just gonna tie it into this corner by slipping it on. and making a knot. Then I'm going to pull up a loop and then I'm just going to insert my hook into the middle of the V's and pull through. Insert my hook, take a loop and pull through. And then I'm just going to keep doing that this whole time. That's pretty much it and you will end up with a very clean finish um, because the granny squares look like very cohesive, you know, and they look nice together. And then the ribbing, like this the little slip stitch at the end, it just kind of adds like a little, little flavor there. So looks really good. Um, so just slip stitch all the way around, tie off, and then you are pretty much done. So that's how you make your granny square balaclava. Hello, so here is how it all looks. Um, with the little slip stitch method. I think it's super cute. I think just adding the little slip stitches gives a cleaner kind of look at the end. Um, but yeah, this is your final ball club. I think it's really cute. Um, trying to show that I still have hair underneath this thing. But yeah, here it is. So that is the end of our tutorial here. I hope you really enjoyed this balaclava tutorial and I can't wait to see what you guys create. Remember to tag me on Instagram or TikTok as credit, um, to credit me as the pattern designer. Also another reminder that my patterns are free on the internet, but not free for you to commercialize. So this pattern does belong to me. It is something I created. Uh, feel free to make one for yourself, make one for your friends, but the uh, you should not be selling these online. Um, I, that has kind of been a problem in the past before, so I just wanted to clarify that now. We enjoy making some granny square balaclavas. I can't wait to see what you guys create and all the colors you use. Um, and yeah, so if you want to see more videos like this in the future from me, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow for more.